Hello everyone, it's Maha. Welcome. I hope you guys are all doing really, really great. Today I'm doing something a little different. I received a huge stock of essential oils because I do sort of a restock once a year of the oils that I've run out of. And I thought I should share them with you. And this is going to be an informal video of me just going through these oils that I've gotten and talk to you about how I use them and basically any information that I have and hopefully it'll be useful to you. Also, I'm doing something very exciting for me. It's a surprise for me. I ordered this oil, the flower oil, and I have no idea what it smells like. I've never smelt it before. I just really wanted it and I took a big risk because it's actually a very costly oil and I took a big risk because I don't even know what it smells like. I just went by reading the descriptions of it. I'm gonna keep it a surprise and at the end we can open it and smell it together. It's gonna be really fun. I've been looking forward to this. I thought about it for a long time and I try to kind of get a sense of what it smells like by reading the descriptions that I found on um, on their website and everywhere else that I read about it. It's actually really fascinating if you think about how we could describe scents in words. It's really tough to do. And I was talking to uh, Larissa from Storytelling Tea and Tarot once about this topic. Uh, she told me that uh, one of her favorite writers gave some advice to uh, beginning writers and said that you know a writer is a beginner when their work has no smell to it. And so I thought that was really interesting because I write a lot and I never thought about using scent in my writing. So that was very good advice that she passed on to me because ever since then I'm really paying attention to scents when I write because I always think visually and more like painting the image uh, to my readers not necessarily setting the scene for the smells but that's so important so a pre-warning this is probably going to be a rambling video but I will try to keep it only specific to essential oils okay so let's go through the oils one by one I got sandalwood Sandalwood is one that I use a lot. Um, this one in specific, because there's a couple of, uh, sandalwood comes from different parts of the world. The one I got is from India, and it's actually apparently one that's highly adulterated uh, because uh, they are kind of going extinct not going extinct but there aren't very many left so they're trying to cultivate them so you really have to be careful where you get your sandalwood from rosewood is another one of those that that you really need to take care of where the source is coming from so that specific one that i got the one from india i use it for meditation sometimes i put a little drop on the back of one of my amethyst crystals that i use on my third eye i've showed it to you guys before in another video I use it on uh, skin for skin care. I blend it with a rose auto. And that I, I just remembered I don't have my rose auto here. I probably have to pause the video later and go get it. So I blend it with rose auto because it really helps to retain moisture in the skin. And I also use it in my diffuser. It's just so meditative. I love the smell of it. It's very gentle, this specific one that I have. And next I have turmeric. This is the very first time I'm buying turmeric essential oil. And you know what, you guys? It's amazing. It smells so amazing. And you surprise. Using it in blends just adds that little tinge, like a little kick, very subtle kick to your, to your blends. I blended it with, the other day, with rose and lavender. Actually, just with lavender itself in olive oil, it's really soothing. Turmeric has just so many health benefits. Uh, the essential oil, I use it as an anti-inflammatory. It's also antibacterial, and it just has a beautiful scent you never imagine. Kind of like a mix between ginger and lemon. 
give it a try if you never have before because you would never think it's a nice one to add in blends and i think i added cardamom as well rose cardamom turmeric and lavender generally i don't I, the, the two numbers that i use in blending are either three or five five they say is like the magical synergistic number for blending oils it's the recommended number i never use more than five personally I find that more than five gets it kind of is uh does the opposite of good for me it makes me feel really sick i feel nauseous i feel a bit dizzy i get headaches so i stick to five and no more than five and i also use three but hardly ever do i use four or two i don't know why it's just they're not the numbers that i use cardamom of course i made a video about cardamom before and i love cardamom oh yeah and especially with turmeric Turmeric, rose, and cardamom. Try that. Cardamom has a really sweet scent, and it's nice with rose because it brings out that sweetness. And next we have rosemary. I got the rosemary verbenone. I did a video on rosemary as well. Of course, we all love rosemary. Rosemary has so many benefits. I use it in a blend for um, muscle as a muscle relaxant. Uh, with ro uh, rosemary, lavender, Roman chamomile, either those three, or I add clary sage and sweet marjoram, which I also bought here. Sweet marjoram is so beautiful. I'm really tempted to open all of these and smell them, but I don't want to mix my, I want to keep my scent clear for the last flower oil that I want to share with you. So sweet marjoram is really great for the nerves, for the nervous system. It calms the nervous system, uh, so therefore you can use it in blends for massage, blends for anxiety, for, for period cramps, menstrual cramps. It's really effective with Roman chamomile and lavender, as well as clary sage. Clary sage is one that regulates the hormones. Sweet marjoram is often linked to the second chakra. It's also one that's used for grief and for sadness. Also for sleep. So if you're having trouble sleeping, sweet marjoram, lavender is really great. Uh, sometimes people ask me which oils they should use in their diffuser. So all of those ones that I mentioned that can be used in a blend will also be really nice in your diffuser. I don't have lemon today. I didn't buy lemon this year. I have quite a lot of it, but lemon is also really nice with rose as well as with la uh, lavender lavender rose and lemon and roman chamomile and uh cape chamomile cape chamomile is really nice to use in all blends because it just it's one that perfumers use as the last scent to kind of keep everything together to blend everything together yeah so that i'm running out of words to describe some of these lavender wild yeah, so I got, the, there's different types of lavender. I got lavender wild. And I got lavender mayette, which is lavender agustifolia, the standard lavender. And the mayette one has a really soft, mayette is a French word, M-A-I-L-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. It's very soft. And the wild lavender I find much more gentle than the regular lavender agustifolia. So if you're someone who finds lavender a little too harsh or overwhelming, like I know my sister doesn't really like lavender and she loves lavender uh, wild, the wild lavender. So try that, try lavender wild. There are so many species of lavender. Sometimes people don't think about it, but if you don't like one kind, you can always try another one because they, uh, it's actually good for your sen sense of smell, to for your nose to experiment with different species of the same plant. I was reading the other day in an article about that about scent, and they said that our sense of smell is the most denied sense that's the sense that we have it's one that we underestimate and we take for granted and we don't work on and apparently after the age of 40 by the time we reach 40 we slowly start to lose our sense of smell so it's, it becomes uh weaker so it's one that's really important to work on and the way you work with it one way is through essential oils and 
instead of right away jumping, it's, this is my suggestion, jumping to blending, uh, maybe try just getting to know one oil, how it, how it is by itself, how it is in different strengths. Like if you do use one drop in a one teaspoon or if you use two drops and how it works with you and throughout different times of the day even because different times of the day or different times of the month when our hormones are changing, we tend to have different sense of smell. We're much more sensitive sometimes and sometimes we're not as sensitive. So it's good to kind of get to know yourself with the sense, experiment with it. And also a uh, sense of smell is really important for developing memory. For example, I know that when you're studying, if you want to memorize something, it's really good to, to have a, an oil around and smell it once in a while because your memory links it to scent. I mean, that's one of the ways through association that our memory tends to link things uh, that we can remember through scent. So two of those that are two of the oils that are useful for that when you're studying and you want to retain information are basil and rosemary. Those two are really good. Basil being the number one choice. It's very good for, for memory, for your central nervous system, and for helping you to remember things. On that topic, 10 years ago, I used to be in love with lavender oil. And then I stopped, I was using it all the time, and then I stopped using it for a few years. Then about four years ago, I hadn't actually uh, used it in a while. And four years ago, I went back to using lavender. And... <laughs> Unfortunately, I started hating it because it reminded me of my ex-boyfriend because I was going out with him at the time when I was using lavender a lot. So it was annoying because I actually really love lavender. So I thought, what should I do? Because I love lavender. I don't want to have these bad memories of this ex-boyfriend that I really don't want to think about. So what I did is I forced myself to go into different areas, different environments where I felt really relaxed and calm. And I took lavender with me and I used it those times. I wanted to retrain my brain so that it could associate good memories with lavender. And I succeeded. I replaced the bad or not so good memories with some pleasant new fresh ones. And it was really great. Now I can enjoy lavender quite the same. I have no associations with it from the past. So that's another thing you can experiment doing. Uh, put yourself in different places, in different environments, and then see if you can associate the different scents to something um, that you feel really good with. So for example, if you're someone who maybe suffers from a little bit of anxiety, try using a certain oil that's good for anxiety, uh, times when you're feeling really relaxed. And then when you come back to the oil, your, your, your brain will remember. It will trigger those positive emotions for you again. That's one way that we can do therapy, aroma therapy. Next, I have neroli. This is a very special one, and you guys, it's so expensive. If you want to get high-quality neroli, you have to be prepared to pay tons of money for it. I think this was $100. No, sorry, I'm wrong. I think it was... 80 well close to a hundred dollars Canadian for five milliliters but this lasts me at least three years I'll keep this maybe even four years because it's super strong one drop is going to be enough for doing a 15 milliliter blend and it's really great for anxiety it's it's the best oil one of the top ones for calming the central nervous system and it's really great for skin it's, it's amazing for skin in fact it's one of the best cell regenerators there is on the market, as well as frankincense and lavender, those three. And I have frankincense, frankincense, yes, I do. I have frankincense because I use it a lot. This one is Boswellia carteri. There is another kind. This is the one that I liked, and this is the one that apparently is better for um, using for skin regeneration. I use aromatherapy a lot in skincare as well as other uses of it, um, like blend, like making blends for pain, um, uh, making blends for uh, menstrual cramps, for sleep, 
all kinds of different blends and also using it in my diffuser. But skincare is one that I use oils quite frequently in and I like to uh, make frankincense actually use, use it in toners. I have a toner recipe on my channel if you haven't watched it already that I give the recipe for a rose water toner and frankincense is a good one. It's really nice with rose. And I have sage, petite feuille. Petite feuille again is the French word and this is this it means little leaves so there are as far as I know, two different kinds of sage in aromatherapy. This one is the more gentler kind, uh, very cell regenerative, very good for skin, um, safe for children. The other one is a little, I think you have to search about how, what kind of cautions, cautions to take with that if you're using it for aromatherapy. This one is really safe. Oh, and Everlasting, which is Helichrysum italicum. This is a really specific scent that kind of reminds me of Roman chamomile, but not really. Um, Everlasting has a high amount of essential fatty acids that are good for skin in combination with rosehip oil and sea buckthorn, which I also got, sea buckthorn essential oil. It's uh, really great. It's a, it combines to give, it actually amplifies its effects it, for the skin. It makes, makes it even more effective to use for, for skin. So they say rose hip and um, everlast, everlasting are good for scar tissue, scar tissues or skin scarring uh, after pregnancy or after surgery if you want to use it on your skin if you have scars that you want to get rid of or smooth out. It really works. It's one of the best oils that works for that. There's in fact been scientific research done on that and everlasting is actually I've, I've done a video on that if you want to watch more details about it. It's a really really great oil for immune system as well. Speaking of immune system, about five years ago I had crazy allergies. I had allergies every single day. I used to live in a moldy apartment about six years ago for three years uh, in Portugal when I lived in Portugal by the, by the uh, ocean. It was beautiful but my apartment was so damp. Um, actually not only my apartment but also my workplace was really damp. Everywhere you went was really damp. It was hard to get rid of it. They didn't have central heating system and I got this um, dehumidifier and I would collect like liters of water every day from my apartment. Sometimes it was so gross because my sheets on my bed would be almost wet, like so damp, so humid. So I, um, I got these allergies. Apparently it was due to mold and humidity and I had Every single day for at least five years, I had allergies like sniffing and watery eyes, itchy nose, itchy throat. It was horrible. And you know what healed me? I mean, I'm dead serious. I don't have allergies at all anymore. Essential oils. I got this blend that was called Allergy Magic and it had naoli, Moroccan chamomile, and peppermint. And those three it was magic. Because what they do, essential oils, what they do is they balance your immune system. So they don't give you a boost of immune system. They don't give your immune system a boost. What they do is they balance it. Because with allergies, what's happening is your immune system is not weak. It's too strong. It's fighting itself. It's autoimmune. So what happens with um, when you use essential oils is it, they it help your whole entire system like holistically bringing it into balance and they're really good for autoimmune diseases like arthritis so if you're suffering with arthritis I would seriously think about or allergies using essential oils and the way I used this blend was I just put one drop on a Kleenex and I inhaled it that's directly absorbing into your bloodstream so you don't actually have to use it as a, a massage blend. Your, the idea is that it goes through the skin, it absorbs through the skin, but it also absorbs through the olfactory system. 
because the essential oils have very, very small, uh, small mo molecules that can absorb through the system and through the olfactory system. So give that a try if you're suffering with allergies. I swear it cured me. I don't have allergies anymore at all. And it's spring right now, no hay fever, nothing. So forget about the medications. The essential oils are going to heal you. Geranium. Geranium, I use it for hormone balancing. I used to have a lot of skin issues. Um, it's funny because some people comment on my nice skin on YouTube. And I swear, I don't wear foundation. I never wear foundation. I don't use cover-up. I don't use anything. I don't even buy any skin cleansers. I wash my, my, my face with soap. But the essential oils are what what makes my skin appear more smooth and have cured all the blemishes that I had in this area particularly it's related to hormones and geranium is really good for female hormone balancing female hormones and as well as a rose auto and clary sage and sweet marjoram which I mentioned before geranium I use for that for making blends for period um, menstrual cramps and for skincare balancing the skin and I also got one that's roses over geranium this one is special because it has hint of rose and geranium and rose and geranium blend really well together apparently when you buy cheap rose um, essential oils they use rose geranium rose geranium is a different kind of geranium and they take some molecules of that which is very similar to rose and they blend it with other things to make rose oil. So that's they have a lot of tricks in manipulating oils. I buy my oils from very, very reputable companies. I've done a lot of research to find two companies that I really trust. I feel really weird giving names of companies here on my channel. I don't usually do that. If anybody is really interested and really wants to know, you can always email me. So the next one is Red Shampa. Red Shampa Absolute. And this one is heavenly, heavenly. I, if I had to choose one word to describe what this smells like, I would pick transformative. It's amazing. I'm using it in blends with um, Neroli and Jasmine. It's amazing, you guys. It's just beyond, beyond words. I don't have any words to explain how beautiful this Red Shampa smells. Like. And I've I've had my eyes on white champa, which is white magnolia. Red champa is a uh, red magnolia, actually, and it comes from India. And the white champa I've never smelled before. So I didn't order it this time. I ordered this other oil. And then I have cinnamon bark and I have anise seed. And I bought these two because I've been working a lot with Oshun. Uh, Orisha Oshun and I wanted to make a blend honoring her so I got sunflower carrier oil. I'm using sunflower as my carrier oil because sunflower is her flower and anise and cinnamon are both her spices and I'm making a blend with actually two blends. One of them is cinnamon. I'm using three and five. So one of them is cinnamon, anise and orange, sweet orange sweet orange is also belonging to her and then I have another blend where I use these three and additionally I use turmeric and rose little bit of rose or jasmine whichever one actually neroli will also be good I don't know I haven't tried neroli yet but I tried jasmine and then the other four it's really wonderful cinnamon is one that I never ever had before actually this is also new to me I was always a little scared because uh, only because it's super strong, right? So I didn't really know how I would use it, but I love using it in diffusers. It's amazing, especially in the morning. Take care when you use any oils in your diffusers. If they are stimulant oils, they're going to keep you up all night. <laughs> One night I was using, um, this is a story. It's always good to have a story to remember something because I know I've read it several times in books that you shouldn't be using oils that are stimulant at night, but I still didn't remember. One night I had um, a lot of moths, those little moths, 
they were flying around in my room for a while and I thought maybe I'll use cedar essential oil because I know they don't like it so then maybe they'll just leave and get out so I used uh, cedar oil in my diffuser and I was up all night and I thought what happened I haven't taken any caffeine pills I haven't you know done anything what did I and then I thought oh no the essential oil so I went in my books and I researched and yes it's a stimulant so remember you guys if you're using any oil at night read and make sure it's not a stimulant because you're gonna be up anise seed is also a stimulant sweet orange is great for sleeping it's really really gentle and relaxing um, oh and I have a little story with anise I this is also a new oil for me I hadn't ever gotten the essential oil of it before because again I thought it would be too strong it would turn me off and it's funny because it's very similar to fennel yet for me personally I Fennel makes me feel a bit sick. Fennel is really good. It has a lot of benefits. It's great for balancing female hormones, by the way. But I thought, I mean, what if what if anise makes me sick too? But it doesn't. It's it's very different. Even though it smells very similar, there are different components, I guess, to it because I don't feel sick at all with anise. In fact, I love it. I find it so nice and sweet, and it, it's also amazing with cardamom. So the time when I was thinking about getting this oil, I met this woman one day and that was a sign for me that I should get this oil because her daughter's name was Anise. And I had never heard of that name before. So I asked her, what, your daughter's name is Anise? I never heard of that, is that French? Because I, I know that French people use that name sometimes for females. And, and she said, yes, it's French, but it's also Arabic. Ah, so I had to research it a little bit and I discovered that it's also Persian. It's a Persian name, but apparently for a guy. And Anis, it's a Persian name. I never knew. So I discovered something I love when I learn new things like that, just like that. I thought that was so beautifully synchronistic and I bought that oil after. I love when stories come hand in hand with my essential oils. So that was quite a few. And I have rose oil, which I told you guys I'm going to go bring. But you know what? I'll just, maybe I'll go bring it. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I was just getting kind of lazy to get up and go get the oil. But I really should show you because look at how small this bottle is. It's tiny. This is one milliliter of rose compared to five milliliters. See how small it is? I'm just looking down at my camera to see if you can see the one milliliter of rose damascena caught rose damask rose cost me forty dollars american and i uh i didn't get the five milliliter because it was a hundred and seventy dollars american and that's how it is you guys that's how much it is on the market i've checked uh different sources and it's 170 dollars if you're getting something a lot cheaper than that that if, if you get like a rose auto oil that's five milliliters for 80 dollars check your source because i would be a little bit wary of it so i use i put what i did is i put this one milliliter in a 125 milliliter carrier oil jar so now i have one big jar of rose oil that i can use for a long time that was what I thought I should do because I could not pay almost $200 for a rose oil. Okay, now we're going to get to the exciting part now because I'm going to open up gardenia flower oil. I got gardenia oil for the first time. Gardenia is related to the moon and I work with the moon's energies quite a lot. So I had to get her. I've been waiting for this and reading about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you one sentence of the scent description of this oil before I smell it. Fresh jungle rain infused with complex sweet notes of jasmine, orange blossom, amber, and gardenia. So I, before I bought this, I went around asking people, if they knew what gardenia flower smelled like and if they could explain to me in words what it smelled like 
that was really interesting. And then I went online and read all about Gardenia, Gardenia perfume. People were saying it's really hard to get the actual authentic grade. And this is the authentic grade. This is the, the real thing. I've, that's for sure. No doubt about that. I really trust this company. So, oh my God, I'm really nervous. What if I hate it? What if I hate it? Well, it's a possibility, you guys, because, you know, not everyone likes the same things. Sometimes someone's someone's really attracted to a beautiful scent and someone else might be completely repelled by it. So there is a risk when you don't know what it smells like and I can't return it. I'll be stuck with it. So I'm going to get myself in the mood now. I'm going to play the Gardenia song, which has been kind of stuck in my head since I thought about purchasing this. This is by Buena Vista Social Club, Dos Gardenias. So now I'm going to uh, put one drop of this in my 15 milliliter of the glass jar I have here. I'm not going to, uh, well, I'm going to take a whiff of it, but I'm not going to put it directly on my skin because that's, sometimes that's kind of, repelling because it's, it's too strong. When the music starts, I'll start. Okay. I'll pretend you're not here. Dos gardenias para ti Con ella quiero decir Te quiero Te adoro this is the real thing. This is definitely the real thing. One drop. It's a beautiful yellowish color. I can't believe I'm actually smelling the real thing. This was $90, you guys. Almost $100. You know what? I'm going to drop one more. It's still too light. Okay, okay. As you can tell, I'm in love. Oh, wow. It's not like anything else I've ever smelled before. It feels like I'm standing in, in a garden right now and smelling a flower right in front of me. Okay, you guys, I think it's enough. I think you, have, you got the idea. I'm in love with this oil. Stop my video, my music. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a bit of a weird and odd video, but hopefully you got something out of it. And Gardenia is amazing. It's amazing. Like I'm just gonna use it all night tonight. Take care. I love you lots. Mwah. Bye.